Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time the Podcast. Got your man, Dale Brisby, and the rest of the crew here. Um, this podcast, who's this one brought to you by? I would imagine uh, Rock and Roll Denim. Rock and Roll Denim. Okay, that's it. The denim of rock and roll. Rockers everywhere wear this denim. Rock and Roll Denim. I'm wearing Vintage 46. They have Reflex Denim in them. Where I, That's what I ride bulls in. You, we're going to talk about um, the new guy getting on a bull at some point in this podcast. You need to be wearing... What size pants do you wear? 31, 34. Ooh, you are in luck. <laughs> okay, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have some of those that um, they're too big for me. By the way, um, that um, I can loan you because if you're gonna ride a bull, you got to wear a reflex. If you're gonna ranch, ride a bull, or do anything, got to wear a reflex denim by Rock and Roll got Vintage it. 46. It's an old school look, just like, I like the that. Panhandle shirts, like the old school Panhandle, like the the button ups. So, anyhow, they've been around for like 78 years. Really, since people have been wearing... I think they invented shirts. I am. Before, sure. people just wore like tablecloths. Yeah. And they were like, what are we going to get to cover or our leaves. upper torso? Yeah. Huh. And Panhandle came along. They are like, what about these shirts we make? And they're like, okay, cool. Next, we need pants. And they're like, we got you covered. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah. Panhandle, the shirt that won the West. Now to the podcast. Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. got donnie ray daytona katrin and our new man alex will william wardle uh that'll be the last time you hear me call him that because he's got uh he's got a new name and for me that is nelly that's what i call him so wait why because you can find him in st louis <laughs> i don't uh, i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, he's well, too young because on your your Instagram says Will, yes sir, and then that went to Willie, that went to Slick Willie, that went to Willie Nelson, <laughs> which went to Nelson, which went to Nelly. So I can follow that. I can follow that. Yeah, that's why I call you Nelly. Good for you because I cannot. And that's why Donnie calls you Neil, <laughs> Mister Rogers. <laughs> Mister Rogers. <laughs> What's he ask? Is that because your last name is Rogers? Oh, your last name's Rogers? No. no. <laughs> Philman, Daryl Philman. <laughs> then, then what's he say? Uh, uh, Regis. Regis Philman. Yeah. Then Reg. Raj. Then Raj. Mister Rajas. <laughs> it's an office quote. First Which season. You, you haven't seen episode I, four. I watched Lonesome Dove. Uh, was it part two or episode two? Episode two uh, last night. Jesus. Just watch it all one once, man. It's only five hours. I had, you watched, I had to get up early. You watched which part? Part two. So have you watched part one? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So you're working your way through <laughs> yeah, it. Yes, sir. Just yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, I just watched part two. <laughs> All right. Um, really hard to follow. When you get done with that, then you've got to then you've got to watch The Office. Got it. Don't you watch The Office? I've seen parts have... of The Office. I just don't know it well enough to like. Mm. It, that takes place in Pennsylvania. <coughs> it's Granton, which is where you're from. Yes, What's it like up there? Well, I'm from Maryland, but I was in PA working. Mm. It's an interesting place. It's do cool. they touch? Is that the same? Yeah, thing? they do. Okay. They're bordered. Yeah, they're pretty much. I mean, when you go to one East Coast state, it's pretty much the same. How old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Just a young buck. What were you How doing whenever you? Uh, you got the call for DB? I was chicken farming. Chicken. Farming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could make a joke. It's right honest now, but work. I won't, so I'm just glad you didn't say chicken ranching. It is chicken ranching. Livestock. No, no, no. They well, were free range. He called it. He called it right. Yeah. It's chicken farming. Okay. That's like a, that's yes, a, that's a, you don't ranch chickens. You farm. could. No, you, you. I could. You couldn't. Oh. That'd be difficult. You couldn't ranch them. I'm the only person that could ranch on them because I don't farm on anything. You might be the only person I know that could ranch them. They're that's hard to catch. That's why They're hard right to catch. Now. That's why he's here right now. <laughs> they actually have chicken ropins. Um, they're really hard to uh, heal. I bet because you got to oh lift them up, right? God. Yeah, you'd well, think you'd think heading them would be the hard part. No, it's healing them. I'd have to pick them up to weigh them every so often, like for the regulations and stuff, and they were hard to catch. So trying to rope one of them. Wait, y'all had free range chickens? Yes, sir. That's ranching. That is ranching. No, that's still but it's farming. inside. It's but, indoors. Oh. 
They're not, they're not in cages, but they can move around okay. in their little their little barn. Oh, okay. They could go outside. See, I like when I eat chicken. I like to eat chicken that hasn't been eating other chickens. Because chickens are cannibalistic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. They're gross. So when they're they're really? Mean. Yeah. So yeah. when they're free range, they eat each other. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, doesn't that sound delicious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they'll pick on each other. If one's wounded, they'll all peck oh, at yeah. it until it's dead. They're mean. Yeah. I had no delicious. idea. Yeah. I, like, I like them in cake. I want, the, I want my chicken, whenever I purchase the, the chicken, you know, whether it be eggs or I want it to say caged. Non-fighting chickens. Right. Right. Yeah, non-violent. Non-violent. Yes. <laughs> See, I like I like my non-violent Can we get some new labels? chickens. Yeah. You just gotta yeah. go for the cage one because everyone's free range, but cage is actually the way to go. That's what I'm saying. It's all marketing. Wow. People, People don't even really know what it means. They think it sounds good. They walk up to it and they're like, "Free range." Oh, this chicken oh, had some freedom before he got his head cut off. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They want it. They think it lived a happy life. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they were. I mean, about. they do this seem pretty content. Was killed by other chickens. But he said free range, and I was just had this mi- image of him riding a little pony around, like, <laughs> <laughs> ranching on some chickens. You know, like, yeah. Get, get them sorted out. Yeah. Actually, he's like, man, I know I'm gonna die on Thursday. Let me be in a cage where I don't have to run for my life. <laughs> well, these from- are these are egg chickens. This is an egg farm. Oh yeah. Oh. But I think either they go to another egg farm after they're done. Or they just go to what turn into meat chickens. What do, you, what do you mean? So like the the guy I worked for, he was contracted by Land O'Lakes. And then they they owned the chickens, he just owned the barns. So then the eggs yeah. would go to the processing center and then eggs egg land best or land of lakes is the ones that own the eggs and they'd process them. Yeah, I knew a guy that did that with hogs. Yeah. He didn't actually own the hogs, he just owned the bull. Yeah, exactly. And took care of them. So how big is the range in free range <laughs> chickens? <laughs> I don't know if I could put a number on it. I know there's there was two barns. There was thirty thousand chickens in each one. What are they like? Twenty Holy yards wide. Moly. Yeah, something like that. About fifty feet. Yeah. And it was just like By what? just five hundred feet long. Yeah. And then it was like divided in two. So you have like fifteen thousand on the one half of the barn, fifteen thousand on the other. I've seen that. I've heard. I knew a guy. He worked at a place like that with turkeys, and there was a cutout in the ceiling, and pigeons were flying in, <clears throat> and he went in there to try and shoot. Those pigeons keep them flying. <laughs> All those turkeys had a heart attack. <laughs> well, there there would be groundhogs that come up the middle of it, and I'd shoot them with my twenty two, and you could hear the chickens just losing it. Yeah, like any noise, they would just go berserk. How many dead ones do you have to pull out a day? Oh, I bet a bunch. Well, when I first got there, he was training them, so he just got a bunch of them. So training them? training chickens. So you gotta you gotta train them so they go up into the um where they lay the eggs. Oh, there's conveyor belts that run on the barn. So you gotta like, take a single poultry science yeah. class and. At college, uh, you just take like a little flag thing and just push them up there. Yeah, the you, like, you don't you don't have to explain. It's okay to not know a lot about chickens. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Did, I didn't know. Did anything. you take a poultry science class? Because I didn't. No, but I did do uh, poultry judging in high school. I got you. My old man was ag teacher, and he had two girls that were really good, and then he needed a third person for the team, and so I did it one year. But so like. It was just comf- I, I knew I didn't want to do it going into it. Oh yeah, you were just and doing then, someone a favor. Well, I, I was doing like, what my dad told me to do. <laughs> I feel like and, I should know a lot about it since I eat chicken. Well, they have a like, they have a poultry science department at A and M, so and right. that's where you went. But what I'm saying is like I knew enough about chickens to be completely okay <laughs> with the fact <laughs> that I didn't want to know any more. It's yeah. hard work. All of this is like I know I don't want them free range to me right now. Yeah. I know I don't want them free range. I'd rather have them caged. And that was like a poultry science professor explained that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Conveyor so, belt. Dead ones. How many a day? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. I had a hard time picking out in the one. The ones, they would they would jump. There were two different breeds. One was High Line. The other ones were, I forget what the other ones were, but they were close to Rhode Island Reds. And like, they were a lot more jumpy. So you would find more dead ones. So that one I'd probably find like between seven or 10 a day. I was expecting more. Well, what what would happen is the one time we have like a little conveyor belt, the conveyor belt thing that runs, mm-hmm. there's like these flaps and there was like a failure and it killed, like wiped out like a hundred of them in like one <laughs> night because they just got crushed. <laughs> so I had to go in there and just pull them all apart and stuff. Like it was... <laughs> no, it's hilarious. <laughs> they're so, they're, that was your job. <laughs> chickens are so funny. Like I was like just cracking myself up like seven in the morning walking, just watching them. Cause they're just they're just like funny looking things. I can think of worse animals to work around than chickens, I think. Pigs. Watching them 
crush themselves on the conveyor belt. No, fight each. They would oh, fight each other. Fight each other. It was like free cockfights. Yeah. yeah, just you sitting there. Yeah, no betting. I don't. I don't condone that at yeah. all. Or anything like that. But it was like you're <laughs> just watching a fight right there. Disclaimer. To be clear. Disclaimer. <laughs> Radio well, time also, disclaimer. Also, I don't think they charge you to get into the cockfights. I think you just make money. Make, mm-hmm. make the bets. Betting. Betting. I've never been to one, so I wouldn't know. Neither have I. But Obviously. it doesn't seem like somewhere where it's got like a gate guy and they're like, no, 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 five bucks to get in. <laughs> no, no, we no. don't condone animal violence. People. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a guy in Winnebago that doesn't. But um, anyway. Dead chickens. That's your job. That was my job. Pick dead chickens out of Nelly, belt. 10 dead chickens out there today. Go get them. I love the guy I worked for. He was a great guy. Just breathing in chicken, chicken crap and... Doing that, I was ready to come down to Texas. And then day one, you're scooping up a dead skunk. Well, I was used to smelling things worse than that. Rotten eggs is probably the worst thing I've ever smelled. Like, these are like month-old eggs that get stuck in the machine. Ew. I'd have to like run out to the parking lot and start gagging. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I like warehouse work and what you got going on here. You're just like, yep, all day. Yeah. Yep. I got no complaints. Splash live. Yeah. Zero complaints. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. Chicken farm, it was, the guy I worked for was cool. I got to do some cool stuff, but it's just, it's what hard work. What was like the one cool thing about working with chickens? They were funny. I was laughing all the time. Okay. <laughs> it's because you got a good attitude. I mean, if you have a good attitude, anything's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty that's fun. Mm-hmm. That's that, the key to life, I think. I've had good, I've had good bosses, <clears throat> but the, but the jobs suck. Yesterday when we were filling up on our way back from uh, Oklahoma City, we stopped in Archer City and filled up in, uh, at All Subs. I went inside and the smell hit me and it reminded me of, my days working at a gas station in high school with two buddies. That was fun with my buddies, but like at the end of the day, I'm working at a gas station and I had to get out of there. Yeah. I've had a few jobs that made me appreciate the next one. Gas station was one of them. Feedlot was another one. At least I got to be around cows, but graveyard shift on the processing crew at a feedlot is not the most glamorous cowboy job to have. Running a hydraulic chute. For you, it's chicken farming. I don't like chickens. I don't like farming. I don't think that's been my worst job, though. Okay, give me that. What What is worse than, than cleaning up dead chickens and rotten eggs? <laughs> when I was at Penn State, the main campus, my uncle was friends with a guy that they pretty much tailored like their fast food restaurant to like advertise to drunk people. So I'd be working Natural. my... I'd be work, I mean, it makes sense. It's a good yeah. business plan. But they would open up at like these crazy hours. So like I'd be working till like 6 in the morning. And you get, like, these drunk sorority girls coming in, like, trying to give me their ID to buy, like, French fries. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't you don't need to give me your ID to buy French fries, ma'am. <laughs> you should have just started checking it. Uh, no, sorry. You're not, you're not a, you don't make the limit. That's you're out of here. No, no, no. You're not old enough. Get heard about them for you. But just dealing with drunk college kids, like, at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning is just... Yes. Were you going to Penn State? Yes. Oh, yeah, man. I wish you'd have said no. Gosh dang. Man. I would have even more respect for you. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I just said when I was at Penn State, I mean, I worked at a gas station on campus. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to get in at first, but then I, you know, it was a comeback story. Yeah. Came back. So you came back and did what? No, I dropped out after coronavirus hit. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped out, yeah, after that thing happened, where the whole world stopped. Okay, yeah, just paused. Yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, <laughs> It's still going on. I mean, in Maryland, you have to wear a mask everywhere you go. Yeah. It was rough. I got yelled at for not having a mask. They wouldn't let me go into 7-Eleven. Yeah. It's completely different down here. Yeah, you don't get yelled at here. Everyone here is very nice. We're also pretty isolated. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well like, be on the North Pole. Has he been tested? <laughs> ah. You have to come into contact with humans <laughs> <laughs> to need to get tested. <laughs> like, I don't think it's just going to travel through the air into his house. But, um, yeah, well, now it's it, it's almost like it doesn't exist anywhere. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what do you think about uh, Winnebago? What do you think about your first day of ranching, day one? we were. I was nervous, I'm not going to lie. I was yeah. very nervous. We were gathering those cows. We're just being on a horse and just... Because it's one thing to be in an arena riding a horse. That's the only thing I've ever done. 
when you're like, have you ridden a horse? It's like, yeah, <laughs> twice in a circle, a couple times. And now, twice now, in a circle. Now we're, now we're out here. I even remember the pattern I went in. <laughs> that was That's it. That's how few times. We went in a circle. It wasn't a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> Not a triangle or a square. It was, it was a, a, a 60-foot <laughs> pin in a circle. That's when I rode the horse. Four yeah. times, that was it. I was off. Golly. So, anyways, walk us through your first day working for Dale Brizzy. <laughs> biggest surprise. What was like the biggest, biggest surprise? surprise? Donnie is not as short as you make him out to be. <laughs> yeah, right. That, or I'm short. That's because you're short. <laughs> Maybe also. I'm short. He's taller than you. <laughs> no, he's not. I think he might be. I don't think so. This guy, the, guys, for those of you listening, <laughs> not watching the podcast, <laughs> Nelly is just as short as Donnie, come to find out. <laughs> come to find out. Anyway, I what's like the other kid. surprise? Other surprise. <laughs> hmm. I'm starting to not like it. I don't know why, Yeah. but now all of a sudden I don't like him as much. Oh, man, I'm messing up now. <laughs> now I guess the biggest surprise is, I thought it was like for some reason in my head, I thought Winnebago would be like out in the desert. It's really green here. Desert? Yes, sir. You were thinking like West Texas, like like. Yeah. Just super dry. Well, I've only been to San Antonio, and it's a little bit more drier down there than up here. So yeah. I was expecting something kind of like that. It's different. Was it because you were expecting all of Texas to be like that? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Texas is huge. Maryland's like a tiny little state. It's like one county compared to Texas. <clears throat> no, I get it. Yeah, no, I understand. I was just clearing that up. I mean, because we got there's every there's a forest on the east side, and um, then there's the Llano Hills central texas and then we're we're in between like we're obviously you go east of here there's more roll and cedar and then we're right on the edge of all the mesquite trees and then like west texas west texas there's even mountains you got everything in texas mm-hmm. shoot so yeah but san antonio that's getting south texas yeah that's <laughs> borderline almost it is i can understand Mexico. it is a little brushy so i can understand how you would you would think that but it's not different what else hmm i don't know i mean it was all just it happened so quick i can't believe it's been three weeks now like it's flying through do i feel like you've been here for like three months this sunday will be three weeks (laughs) monday yeah or monday yes sir yes sir will be three weeks yeah three months is that a bad thing no what i just feel like you fit in good oh i hope so i like it here good for you kid you like water (laughs) you like be like water (laughs) Um, what, what was it that made you want to come here? Uh, I mean, I think the first thing was just the whole atmosphere. Cause you know, it's, it's completely different from Maryland, like the rodeo stuff, the Western stuff. I've always been like interested with cows cause I'd help the farmer. There's mostly dairy cows up there. So a lot of farmers will do it. Even if they aren't a dairy farmer, they'll get the bulls and the steer dairy cows for dirt cheap and raise them up, and they'll take them to the butcher shop and use that for their beef. So I'd help him load cows, and I, I thought that was the most fun. I just thought it was way more fun than working chicken farm. And then I think that's how I told you how I came across your page, was I helped my friend back home. His dad has a bunch of Herefords. 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 <laughs> I, is it, it's called Herf- Herefords? Herefords. Yes. Maybe I just haven't been listening when people around me call them that, because I could have sworn they called them Herefords. If it's Herefords. Maybe that's that a, might be Herefords. I mean, I'm, East Coast you're thing. definitely the right. Yeah, you're definitely right. You're definitely yeah. right, you know, oh, boss? Oh, yeah, no. Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. saying you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But here, Herefords. Herefords. Mm-hmm. Herefords. Herefords. Got it. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I helped him load some of that, and I looked up on YouTube just, like, starting your own, like, ranch or something like that, or, like, looking up, like, how to, like, start a little herd. <laughs> just, like, just stuff because I just thought it was interesting. I've never been exposed to, like, actual, like, herding, like, cows. And like I came up your I think it was your six, seven year old rancher or not you ain't no cowboy, you're sleeping on the first gen. Yep. And you woke up early in the morning. And I I'd I'd say I'm a funny guy. I don't know if my friends would say that. So I liked how it was like stuff I was interested in, but you were also funny, so that aspect. So I was like, shoot. I just started following it for a couple months or years and then after you typed in the word ranch or cow or anything from the search, how long was it before you found one of my I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't want to make something up. It seems like it happened pretty quick. Yeah. But but people people in PA and Maryland, they know. They've heard about you. Like the farmer yeah. I worked for, he he was doing something. I said Old Son or something like that. He's like, you watch Dale Brisby? And I was like, <laughs> how the heck how the heck do you know who that is? But yeah, a bunch of them, they all how heard of Dale he? Brisby. 
He, I believe, was 38. Oh, dang. I yeah. Expecting a little older. Yeah, yeah that's me right too. in our wheelhouse. Know. Well, I told all of my, mm-hmm. my brothers and my family all thought he was like some like 50 or 60 year old guy. And then they met him. Like, oh, he's like. I thought you might have even said this old farmer that I worked for. I probably said that I didn't mean it like he was an old guy. He's probably old to him. Yeah, I'm only 22. That's like. Yeah, I guess. Stop it. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Um. <clears throat> It's like three weeks now. It's not three months anymore. Sorry. I just got a good text. <laughs> Distracted me. Distracted me. Uh, so, but but I'm just, I guess you think it was like within the same session? Oh, yeah. You start typing in. For sure, for like sure. Like I typed minutes, it in. I found that. Be yes, sir. I'm just curious, like somebody with no connection to just even how they, Texas, yeah. you know, how long it takes. Yeah. Dale if Brisbane your tags to, work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how it all works. How well are we doing our jobs, yeah. essentially? <laughs> uh, that, would you say that would that was maybe the first video you saw, but what yes, would be the one where it was just like, okay, I this need guy's to, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, cool enough that I want to go work for it. Yeah. I really like the 67 Old Ranch one. I feel like everyone says that. But, um, now you're putting me on the spot. Let's see if I'm actually been watching the videos. Yeah. Well, it seems like at some point you had to switch over and watch some of the rodeo times. Yeah, yeah. I started watching a bunch of the rodeo times. Like, I really like the original ones. Like, the first one where I guess you said it was in Cowtown mm-hmm. in New Jersey. That's my neck of the woods kind well, of. Well, that was just a <clears> – <throat> that was the first video. That was the period. first one, yeah. So but I, I, rodeo time as a is, is like essentially our vlog. Yeah. That, that I think I started it when I was here, maybe in like 2016, 17, late. But anyway – <clears throat> I I don't even know. Before that, we were just putting out random videos, which we still do. Yeah. But the rodeo times are essentially like what's going on on the ranch. Like a regimented currently. thing. Yeah. 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 I've kind of got that just since started working here. But yeah, I don't know which one. I I really want to say like from the beginning. I wasn't really set on becoming an intern until probably about like December, just this past year. Yeah, I was a fan. Like I bought a couple hats and shirts and stuff like that just because I was a fan and I thought it was cool stuff. But I wasn't really like I want to go down here and work. Tell me about your video. You sent in a video. Oh, I thought I thought I was gonna get on the Katie Kaufman level soon because I just was like sending you guys DMs and and videos and I was like these people are gonna think I'm a nut job. But <laughs> I was starting to get nervous. You had a couple edited ones. Yeah, iMovie. Yeah, it's Maybe like not. maybe I should put some work in here. Try and make it a little funny. So. I'm- you you did it right. Like, it's okay to reach out multiple times, mm-hmm. you know. Nine times a day, every day, then all of a sudden you're turning into spam. But yeah. you didn't do that. I was getting, I felt like I was getting close to that, but no, I didn't do that. <clears throat> no, you, you did the same thing Gabe did. You know, you just were persistent. There's a difference mm-hmm. in being annoying and persistent. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the day, there's only so many, we only have so much time to check messages. Yeah. And interns, we usually tell people, send a video to Rodeo Time Instagram, Donnie's Instagram, my Instagram. And then, you know, it just depends on the needs that we have at the time for what that intern will need to do. Like, I've got on my mind an intern coming up, not a person, but a job for an intern Mm -hmm. that's going to be unique that we've not done yet. Mm -hmm. Um, With you, we're trying to get you situated to where you're going to be doing some editing. Yes, sir. um, Because... But right now, coming off of BOGO, you're pretty um, busy in the warehouse, which is great because you are down to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what got Donnie here because that's why he's been here so long because early on he came in, he was was willing to – he was DFW, down for whatever. And uh, so he worked in the warehouse, took on a few jobs in there, impressed the warehouse manager. That's what you got to do. She's hard to impress, too. You got to work hard. If you can (laughs) – that ain't no – curse word that ain't no like insert curse word no crap because yes sir she does not put up what she d- she she hates it it's like we just don't have the time yeah she's time. she's 100 miles an hour every day and 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 knowing her i mean she's single mom with five kids so like there ain't no excuse <laughs> you know yeah there's like, none you can't come to her with an excuse that where she's just like oh okay no sir you can be lazy today you know like <laughs> you can't you go look at her and she's just like in a good mood number one and then like working her buns off and then doing a good job at it too you know and so you look at her and you're like trying to come up with excuses just like you know what 
Never mind. I'm just going <laughs> to go back to work. Some shirts. I'm just going to get back to work. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of the key. That's what happened with um, all the interns that are still here today. They've impressed her, you know. Because it's good to impress me. That's fine. But, like, sometimes I get distracted. I'm not going to be around you for two or three days. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're only impressing me and I come back and get some report that, like, Well, she sees everything else. Yeah, exactly. That you don't see. She runs my life. Yeah. Like, she runs it all. Anyway, so that's what you did. That's what Donnie did. That's what Gabe did. It's the only reason Joe is still here, still on probation. Joe is not impressing me. That's the proof in the pudding. Joe is not impressing me, still on probation in the vlogs, but Joe has impressed Lisa. So, bingo, bango. Um, Gabe's on probation in the vlogs right now. Yeah, Gabe's on probation. He let the cows out. He has frustrated me. He's still on good terms <laughs> with uh, Lisa, so he gets to stay, but he's going to get blurred out. So be careful. Yes, I mean, but but just know that you let the cows out doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get canned. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be some trouble, but you're not. (laughs) Yeah, you might get blurred out. You may like, it's almost like you don't exist, Mm -hmm. you know, in rodeo time land. Yes, sir. (laughs) Reshun. (laughs) Unshun. So, what else? What you want to get accomplished? You're 22. You moved down to Texas. You're working for Dale Brisby. Dang. What's your goal in life? Yeah. Where, where do, you, do you see yourself in? It's heavy, no pressure. Yeah, Donnie and I were talking about this before, and I, I think I told him I, I got no idea what I want to do. That's okay. Yeah. That is 100% okay. <laughs> Better to have that and like just see where life goes than to like Try and have force these yourself. unrealistic expectations. And like, yes, sir. Or something you're not passionate about, and you just kind of yeah. think it's what you should do. Yeah. That's why I wanted to get out of college because I just, I mean, I might go back still, but like I started off going to engineering. And I was like, I do not want to sit at a desk for the rest of my life drawing and doing math. I hate math. I don't want to do math the rest of my life. <laughs> Definitely shouldn't be an engineer. <laughs> that's why I stopped the first semester. You can but, have an engineering degree in Red Bronx. That's true. I mean, yeah, but I just, <laughs> I have no guy. idea. You know a yeah. guy? Yeah, I do know a guy <laughs> that yeah. does that. They're wicked smart, too. He's a world champion. Actually. Yeah, he's actually really good. <laughs> But you knew that's not what you wanted to do. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's the difference. Jacobs wanted to do that. Yeah. His dad mm-hmm. was an engineer. Like, he was passionate about that. He was good at it. Mm-hmm. He was more passionate about bronc riding, so he put it on the back burner. Then he got even more passionate about real estate than engineering, so it's back burner, back burner. Yeah. <laughs> so it's bronc riding. It's pretty good back burner, back burner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is like, you can't just go get that as a back backup if you know it's going to be a backup from the get. Yeah. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. it's different if your plan A is rodeo because that has an absolute timeline. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeesh. very few people are going to be rodeoing full time at, let's even give it a stretch, 45 years old. Mm-hmm. We're talking about rough stock. <clears throat> but it's pretty obvious you're going to need to still have a way to make a living for 20 more years at the least. So, like, if you want to have a, but outside of like those three rough stock events, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm with Donnie. Like, it's okay to not know so long as you're like, I don't know. I just, I'm a fan of you. You don't want to have a degree as a backup at this point. You might as well just go find something. But that yes, doesn't I mean you get, you can just be lazy. Like, yeah. I'm not saying like, Right. You can't do nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, well, you're not lazy. He's not lazy. Yeah. That's I'm, not in this conversation. But for the listeners, that's not yeah, what Donnie's I mean, saying. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with mechanical. My best friend is mechanical engineering at University of Tennessee, and he loves it. Well, we got to have them. Yeah. You need them. They're, I mean, they're pretty essential jobs. Just like yes. doctors and lawyers. Like, I just, you know, so like all college is not like. Yes, sir. But like <clears throat> for you to know that it wasn't for you. Something came up where it was obvious you couldn't finish at least on time. So mm-hmm. you might as well stretch it out a little further. You get this other opportunity. Who knows what it could lead to? You know, I Don- figure I'm pretty happy right now. I don't really have any regrets of going anywhere else. Yeah. Or just thoughts. Well, once you get out into the, the whole the industry, so like right now, you've got to see Winnebago. Yeah. And it's pretty phenomenal in Winnebago. Yes, sir. It's pretty. But. When you get out and see the rest of the industry as far as like the Western apparel, Western fashion, like that side of it, or the arena side of it, the rodeo industry, 
you know, you start to realize all the other career paths a person could take. Some of them lucrative, some of them maybe not so much, but that's not what it's all about. Anyways. Yeah. Money has nothing to do with success. Oh, yeah, 100%. So, um, once we get to traveling a little more this summer, later in the year, you know, you'll even, your eyes will even get a little bit bigger. Um, but you're in this little bullshit town working for Dale Brisbane, and you already know that you're in a better place yeah. than you were. So that's, that's a great. pretty dang yeah. good sign, you know. And I don't know. We were pretty blessed last year. We didn't have to shut down, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, I'm not saying we're, I am not at all saying that we're immune to any sort of, you know, hiccup, right. you know, wrinkle in the system. But we we did survive that one, which was a blessing. Anyway, so <clears throat> what about here within within the confines of Rodeo Time Incorporated? What do you see? Like what, let's say you're going to be here for a year, just hypothetically. Yes, sir. We'll not even, we'll imagine that you leave on your own accord. You don't get asked to leave. Let's say like <laughs> hopefully family situation, you want to go spend time with your grandma or whatever, and you leave in a year and go back. Within that year, what will you wish to have gotten accomplished here? Uh, well, it means it seems like you guys already have a pretty tight knit kind of family here. So I hope if I go there, I'll be able to keep in touch and kind of be accepted in that. Oh, uh. so, so stay in touch. Yes, sir. You want to stay yes, in touch? Sir. Okay. Pen pals. Yeah. You want to be pen pals? <laughs> pen pals people? from Maryland. That's not me. We can be pen pals. No, what about but. like here at work? Hmm. But I'm saying like like, is do you want to have gotten on a bull? Do oh, you yeah, want to have want to learned about running a business? Like, what is it that you? Uh, I just want to make sure. This is this is where I'm going <laughs> with this. I want to make sure that like I know why you're here so that I can, you know, help you meet that need. I definitely do want to get on a bull. You definitely point. do. Yes, sir. That's strong. See, that's I didn't realize you definitely yeah, did. Yeah, I, uh, I know I you said you would. I've been thinking about it some more. I, I definitely want to get on one now. But you now you definitely want to. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, yeah, we need to. That's that's all I need to know. So now we'll start working towards and that. And after that, I'll just leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That'll be the year. <laughs> no. Well, it's... Four o'clock right now. We can have you out of here. By <laughs> <laughs> Get on the plane and go. Takes, on. All we got to do is load the bulls. Five p.m. You can be gone. Um, all right, check. I can facilitate but, that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, right now I'm pretty content. I don't really know if I want. I mean, I guess just being exposed to the whole industry and I guess the lifestyle of rodeo time because it's completely different from what I'm used to. TBD, to be determined. Yes, ma'am. TBD. TBD. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to ask? Yeah. So the other thing, the next thing on your list is going to be editing. Yes, sir. Know? So that's a pretty big deal for us here, you know. And that was a, that was one of the big reasons why you were able to, because just like most people, just want a ranch. Yeah. They don't even want to work in the warehouse. And like that's not something you can really do here. Yeah. Like. I mean, we're going to get to ranch, but yeah. like there's other things that make the wheel go around, you know, that we, we are also going to do yes, sir. like, you know, filming gigs and warehouse stuff and ranching is a part of that, you know, but, um, we don't necessarily need 19 ranch hands, <laughs> you know, yeah. like there are times when, when, you know, those of us who are here for that we'll go out and do it and we need everybody but even those times are you know eight days a year yeah you know um but that's not saying that that's all you're gonna ranch obviously you've already ranched a lot yeah even in your first couple of weeks but and that's all ranches like when it comes to spring works fall works it only takes a certain amount of time you know that's not something that you do 10 months a year yeah. at a ranch there's know? only so much you i think we talked about that when you gave me that call for the first time. Like, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. It's not like 24-7 you're going to be out. Yeah. Now, we are going to we are gonna um, work some calves next week sometime. Hopefully they're not too big. And so you'll get to work some calves with us, you yes, know, sir. next week. And, um, God, they're going to be big. Yeah. It's going to be rough. But uh, so that's coming up. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to facilitate that. Like, I understand that, like – that's part of it. So like, I'm going to teach you how to ride. I'm going to mm-hmm. teach you how to saddle a horse, get you comfortable. And, uh, <clears throat> and even if that was all you wanted to do, like you're the kind of guy that like I, we would have still let come, 
you know, you got put at the top of the list because you're willing to do anything and you were willing to meet the editing need. But anyway, so that's next. What kind of question you got for a, a Pennsylvanian, Maryland? Um, well, he said in his videos that he wanted to ride. He's like, I think I'm gonna ride Bronx. Then he said, then he said, then he said he saw those horses buck. Oh, he's never he never been to a rodeo. We need to get him to a rodeo. Wait, what? Oh yeah, you he's never, never been, to a, been to a rodeo. No man. You which which horses? You saw Donnie get on when Donnie was getting on. That looked like some pretty intense stuff. Yes. Seems like it takes it takes a lot of getting used to being on rough stock before you can get to that level. Yes, I'm, so I'm honored. I'm pumping the to brakes. Be the first bronc rider that you have ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> saddle bronc is the horses. You see how high off the ground they yeah. are. You see how fast they're going. It's one thing to see it on video, but when you see it in person, that's it's intense. Yeah, it's cool. It was cool watching them do it, but. I it think I'm a long way from cool. that. Thanks. It is extremely. I'm glad I got a road. It's extremely difficult to uh, tone down a, a bronc for a beginner. Yeah. It's like a. It takes a special kind of horse, and when you find them, you ride them into the ground till they die, because, like I we in in my life, you know, we've always had bucking horses, and we've yes, had like sir. five, maybe maybe four, you know, and it's just. You don't find them very often, and we've got two now that are just. But even even if you even though we've got an almost great practice horse, it's still just if you don't know anything about. If you've never been bucked off a horse and you choose to saddle bronc riding, like it, it can be really dangerous because you mm-hmm. have to know how to get bucked off. And horses, horses, horses can be scary. Yeah, and you still got to have hustle to ride a bull too. Yeah, like you still. I'm not saying. But it's but it's it's a lot easier to find a bull that kind of bucks because then they're going to be slow, yes, sir. and they're lower to the ground. Um, horses that only kind of buck, they're high off the ground and they're moving fast. They just take off, don't Usually they? Usually, the ones that buck that don't buck that good go faster. Yeah, you know and that's which is more dangerous. Yes, sir. What we got to do? Nothing. You made it recurring. Yeah, I need to remind me to post my Cotton Fest. Here's a a quick uh, mid-roll. It's a plug. Cotton Fest, Lubbock, Texas, June 4th and 5th. Uh, There's going to be a goat roping. Bet you can't beat me at that. William Clark Green. A bunch of people are playing. Six Market Boulevard. Uh, I think Wade Bowen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's William Clark Green's deal. It's at Cook's Garage. Same place they had the Tech College Rodeo this last year. Dolly Shine. Dolly Shine. Really cool facility. Yeah. Me and William Clark Green are putting it on together. Mainly him, but I'll be there. <laughs> um, yeah, so come to that if you're around Lubbock, June 4th and 5th. BYOB. BYOB. Which is interesting. Bring your own bronc. Bring your, bring <laughs> I was going to say, what's that mean? <laughs> bring your own bronc, bring your own beer. Um, what were we talking about? Bronx. Yeah, bronc riding, bull, bull riding. riding. Yeah, so anyhow, it's just easier to tone down mm-hmm. bull rides, you know, because those bulls are just, so we can get you on a bull. Now, please, you know, watch enough film to know that like there's a there's a rodeo rex page on Instagram. Yeah, I follow them I for a that. reason. You know yes, what sir. I mean? Like, yes, sir. it's dangerous. So I don't want to undermine this. Like, oh no, I understand. It's less dangerous than saddle bronc riding. Learn, but it's the still, learning part, but it's still dangerous. Yes, sir. Yeah, we've so, I've I've had this conversation with him. Yeah, we talked about this. That's good. I sometimes don't, am not, I guess I am serious enough about it. I have that conversation, but sometimes I'm scared I don't talk about it enough. Yes, sir. Because I've been around it all my life and I know it's just assumed. And it's also like in my blood and in my mind, like there's, it's so deeply entrenched into my, the foundation of my life that like, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I have to do it. You know, and my family understands that they always have. And so... Um, You're the greatest of all time. Yeah, I'm the greatest I mean, of all time. It's understandable. <laughs> it's they get it. Yeah, you know, it's and like, be like, and be like Picasso, not painting. Exactly. Yeah. I was gonna say Michael Jordan not playing basketball. <laughs> yeah, same thing. The world was sad. Ruth, whenever he went and played baseball for 18 months, or was it 16? Babe Ruth. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, I just wanted to stress that that you could you you know. Death is a possibility. But um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> so you want to get a bull road. 
You want to get on a bowl. Yes, sir. Now you want to get one road. You, yeah, you we want to get singular. You said you want to get on a bowl. I, I want to get on one to see what. And then you'll decide if you want a second one. If I want to work hard at okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes, right. sir. I was just, yes, I didn't know. I like know how if, I said that. If I want to work hard at it. Like, I didn't catch that. I didn't hear you tell. She just said it. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. Thank you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> because that's that's really the best spot to be. Either all in or nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially with something as dangerous as bull riding or bronc yeah. riding. You kind of got to have your mind made up and, and go for it. It's That's what I was saying. Especially yes, bronc riding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can entertain a bucket list bull rider. I can do that. I, we can talk about that. Still very dangerous. Sure. But like... We can put you on a herd bull that's probably not going to kill you, you know? Mm. Bronc riding? Nope. It's not for kicks and giggles. Yeah, go talk to somebody else. <laughs> go go, go to a school. Go to a rodeo school. But, and seriously, you know, there's a lot of rodeo schools out there. They have them. I don't know of a lot of bucking horse rodeo schools outside of SankeyRodeo.com. Lyle puts them on all over. Uh, bull ride, bronc ride, and bareback. <clears throat> but if you ain't ever been on one, it's... You got to convince me for a long time before I'll let you get on your first one here. Ain't that right, Don? Long time. <laughs> long time saying, long I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to ride bulls. No, I never said I didn't. I, I knew I couldn't say that. I couldn't say I, I didn't want to ride bulls because he wouldn't let me get on Bronx. Yeah. And getting on bulls helped you. Yeah. I'm probably, the next person that comes along, I'm probably not going to be as encouraging. You were you You had potential to be a really good bull rider, too. So, like, I wasn't, not that somebody should do something only because they might be good at it if they don't want to. But I'm just saying, like. There was times I enjoyed it. Exactly. And and me being an optimist. And I, I wasn't that. even, like, like, I was just getting on here at the house. So, right. like, but, I mean, it was fun. There was times it was fun. Um, I just knew I wanted to ride bucking horses. And yeah. There was. There was also a time when you knew you wanted to ride bucking horses you had maybe said it to me a couple of times, but then you didn't say it for a stretch. Maybe. Like there was a time where, where I didn't really hear a lot about horses. Yeah. You, you might've been thinking it every day, mm-hmm. but in my mind, I was borderline hoping not <laughs> that, I, that it was a face. <laughs> that it was a face. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Like I love bucking horses, obviously, but I just, I got to make sure somebody really wants it yeah. before I... I understand that now, but... You see where I'm coming from. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, knowing what I know about you and how passionate you are, it was obvious I should have let you get on one sooner. Yeah, yeah. But bull riding, getting on a few bulls did kind of help yeah, for your sure. mindset. Because I've never been on anything that bucked. I've never been on it. Right. What, did you have much... Did you do anything athletic-wise in high school growing up, anything? I played soccer and lacrosse, and I played soccer in college for a couple years. I mean, soccer is... I don't know what you guys <laughs> think about it down here, but... Football. I was going to make a joke about lacrosse, but... What's wrong with lacrosse? Already, What's lacrosse? It's with a stick. Yeah, you run around and <laughs> hit people with a stick. It's you like, hit each other? It's field yeah. hockey. It's field hockey with pads. Oh, it's not the same thing? No. Lacrosse is where you wear the helmet and the stuff. Yeah, but I thought field hockey, you played with a helmet and pads, too. I don't it's, think so. It's not the same exact sport. Look, when I put, the lacrosse that I was playing with got pretty violent sometimes. Yeah. Like, there's some people getting clocked. Like, yeah. I got clocked the one time by this huge kid. It's not fun. Like, knocked out? I didn't get knocked out, but I got put on my butt. Dang near. Yeah. yeah. You definitely don't have to have had to, like, um, had a contact sport like football or something. But <clears throat> essentially what you've got to learn to do is is go to a mental place where you're ready to fight. That's something I'm going to have to But have no fear. Flip the switch. Or or fight in, even if there is a little fear. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the... Fear's in the, good. Sometimes. I don't think fear's good. I think you got to leave all emotion out of it except that... Like, you got to control your emotions. I was scared of bareback horses. And that level of fear was not good. There's bronx or bulls that I get nervous about. I wouldn't call it fear because, like, I'm here on my own will. And, like, it gets me excited and I really want to, like, I don't know. <clears throat> but um, that first time, I feel like I'm going to be pretty. Yeah, probably. The first time. Your and then after be. after I know what it's like a little bit more. I was, I've, I've never been scared of bulls. 
Even but, your first time? Correct. <laughs> Bronc riding, my first 50, I was scared. Mm-hmm. Fear. It was I mean, you F- are the greatest. E-A-R. But I've never been scared of bulls, any bulls. But um, but bronc riding, I was, and then, but I would, I would, I would train colts growing up, and I, I've trained some colts, like I, I, I jip around the round pen, and I would get on any horse okay. in a round pen, like my dad, what my dad would put me, he'd put me on a horse, no halter, no bridle, like bronc in the pen, you know. And he would throw stuff at me, you know, like he was like, it was a game. Dad, what are you doing? Yeah, it was a game <laughs> no, to my dad. my dad and I. Like we would just get random horses at the sale, never been touched. They and didn't just do that like, in Maryland. And anyways, <clears throat> whatever. The point is, is like I just, I worked for certain horse trainers. Like every day a horse was bucking. Something would happen. It would run off or buck, and it just – I just, it was just part of it. It was just part of being a cowboy. I would get bucked off. I would, horse would fall, would roll. But then when I would go to a rodeo or get on a bronc in a pen at the practice pen, I would be terrified. And then one day, like, my old man, he was just like, it's the same thing. And I was like, it was an epiphany. Yeah. And I was like, you know what it is? (laughs) Because I'll get bucked (laughs) off at the road, on a bronc, on a saddle bronc course, and I would just be okay. Like, I wouldn't get hurt because, like, I knew how to hit the ground or, like, I'd be flying, you know, I, as I was coming off the horse, you know, I could kind of twist for the most part and, like, I would be all right. And and he's just like, they're the same thing. And it was like, a, it was a switch. And I was pretty much never really scared of any bronc after that. Now, there is a feeling, there is a time when you when you don't feel prepared. Yes, sir. You know, when, I, when you're yeah. prepared, yeah. when you're ready for something – like <clears throat> when you've been working at it and you know you're ready to perform at your highest level and you've worked on the fundamentals and you've worked on you've got good equipment and you know what to do yes sir and there's a time where all you got to do is mentally take your level to that take yourself to the level where you need to fight i've never been scared in that moment i've been on some animals where i knew i wasn't prepared for that animal and that made me nervous. Yeah. But I wouldn't call it fear. Bareback riding, it was always fear. The first the first 25 or 30, I was not scared in bareback riding. Then I got hung up, and I was like, this is the end of the world. But then when you get hung up to a bull, number one, if you're at a, at a pro rodeo, you know, typically most of the time you've got at least one good bullfighter. Most if there's if they're stock contractor hires, they're gonna have one good bullfighter. The other guy just might be wearing clown paint. If they're committee hires, usually they're both gonna be pretty salty, pretty good guys. So like it's like, man, he's right there. You know, if you got Cody Webster, Dusty Tuckness, those kind of caliber, Nate, you know, all those guys, you're hung up, they're there. Or they're they're at least doing all that they can. Yeah. You know. Yes, sir. And, and that to me it's like I don't know. The rest is out of your hands. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You do your once part. Once you kind of, once you kind of realize that, and like just put all your trust in God, and just that's all you can really do. Yeah, we were talking about people getting cars every day. Yeah. I mean, you can't just be scared to do it because you're gonna die. I feel like you just if something I really want to try, just go for it. Yep. Sounds morbid, but yes, yes, yeah. What do you think, Katrin? About the new guy. <laughs> I think he's good. I don't have anything bad to say about you. Thanks. I like that we're, I like that we're doing this three weeks in rather than the first day. Yeah, we know a little bit more about him. I was pretty nervous in that first video too. I thought you said you were getting a haircut. I did. Yeah. I got I got my sides. Oh. That's it's more all of a you mullet. were gonna do. Yeah. It's more of a mullet. I I was gonna get it all cut off and I went over to Connie's. Oh. A little name drop there. I don't know Connie. <laughs> I, I I just looked it up on oh, yeah. Google and she was like she was like playing with my hair. She's like, you want a mullet? And I was like, that's just a sign. I'm just going to get it. Get it back. <laughs> can we Can we see it? Shoot, yeah. Show us the flow. Yeah. So it's not. I mean, my hair's probably all messed up. No, like, yeah, see? dude. It doesn't look bad. You know who he looks like? Joe Dirt. No. Freaking. Uh, uh, Keanu Reeves. No. Oh, the mullet. Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. I love that guy, too. He yeah. looks just like to... Theo Vaughn. I shaved last night. Gang, I was like, dude, gang. I look like Theo Vaughn. Gang, gang. Bruh. Why did you shave? 
I, I kept this part right here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, can't I grow I can't it. grow a mustache in like <laughs> it takes me a couple months. It. Yeah, that was I, that was I was disappointed when you got here. It's gonna be hundred percent Texas ground you, when it comes back. That's true. Oh. And you're gonna have the mullet. Yes, sir. Dang. Gang gang. I'm trying to fit into Winnebago. The Oklahoma waterfall. And if it doesn't work out here, you might could go work for uh Theo Vaughn. Don't fit there in. we go. Just be different. So yeah. I had I had I have evidence that I had a mullet before and a mustache. Oh, we're not doubting it. Yeah, you don't have to show us. I gotta give you guys. I mean, if you're just wanting to show us for the heck of it, that was my that was my school ID from a year ago or two years ago. You look even thicker in this. Yeah, I was gonna say you definitely look. Have you lost weight? Chicken farming leaves your effect on you. It's like I don't I don't know if I lost weight (laughs) or not. Kind of like kind of like whenever uh, Matthew McConaughey had to do the the Uh, bull riding movie. Is that what it was? Kind of like Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. 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 Was that your Dallas Buyers Club? Yes, sir. Chicken, chicken farming, farming. Yeah, but you, I had them old before. The that that bold. one's trashier, which the means bold. it's better. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's shorter. I gotta bring it. Oh, this one is. <laughs> yeah, the one you currently have. I is, like going to have. It's better. Is is, is better. Yes, yes, sir. I agree. It's not not. Now, it's just not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your mullet would be on a scale of one to ten. Don't take offense to this. It would be That's a right. four compared Ooh. to some of the ones I we saw. saw I saw your story. Yeah, yeah, there's no perm, which elevates it a lot. Well, I was afraid because I got this. I think I got this Monday, the day you guys left. So mm-hmm. then I saw your story. I was like, great. Now I was going to think I got a mullet just so like I could. You like mullets. And I was like, great. <laughs> this is not what I'm trying to do. That, like that I actually like having a mullet. My, that yeah. did not cross well, my Well, I was thinking about that. I was like, great. Yeah. But now I look like I'm following a Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> now I look like a weirdo. No. No, you look like a weirdo. That's for sure. <laughs> you do look like a weirdo. Ouch. But it's like on purpose. Yes, sir. A unique one. But once you have a mullet, I mean, it's like at that point, like, just like so much extra confidence. It just comes. Yeah, so many more chicks <laughs> just sliding it's in It's just, just so, yeah, exactly. Really? Yes, yes, that's, ma'am. That's me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's true. I have much um, more chicks in my DMs. Interesting. <laughs> well, what else? You want to get on a bull? Are you ready to get to start editing? I'm I'm edited that interview or that video I sent in to you guys, but my editing skills are very weak right now. But I'll work hard at it. I'm ready. When are you guys are ready? Did you ever upload Final Cut Pro? Yeah, it's on my computer. Oh, okay, so I uploaded that. Oh, you money for that? I mean. Yeah, whenever. There you go. I'm not. He's I'm not. I'm not. He's I'm not guy. worried about it. I tried to pay him for watching my dog, and he wouldn't take any money. I did that just being and trying to be, in, you know, he's taking me in here, you know, showing me around Winnebago. I figured it's the least I could do. And his dog's cute. Rango's a pretty cute dog. Well, he also bums rides everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I got to pay yeah. off the gas. There you go. Give him give him a ride. I figured him. it all evened out. I've never taken him anywhere I wasn't going already. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really, I can't really <laughs> hold that over his head. Um, yeah, no. So you downloaded Final Cut before you even came here. So that was a pretty good sign. The fact that you put it on your computer yes, sir. without even knowing what it was, that's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, he made a video. Maybe um, Usually we don't release the intern videos, um, attorney-client privileges, but he made a video where he said all the right things. And we've had people fool us where they said some things and then they show up and we thought they were joking. Turns out they weren't <laughs> or like... <laughs> they were just wordsmithing, and turns out they weren't quite as... Anyway, but, so we knew that was possible. You know, we do, you si- you got to send a couple of videos, explain why you're, you'd are you be a good fit for the ranch, and then you've got to, we do a Zoom call. Anyhow, his video was just, it was pretty much how he could bring value here. I understand that, you know, you have a goal, a dream of being a rancher. I get that. You know, we all do, but I got about six friends that live within a 10 mile radius of here that would love to work for me and i these are people that if they call me at two in the morning i would go help them yes sir and um but you know it just hasn't worked out and what i would need to pay them for an intern is going to be a little bit less anyway the point is is like You got to give me a reason to hire you over somebody that's like that I've been tight with for a decade. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. It's not that I don't care about your dreams. It's just that, or somebody like whoever's out there that I don't know. It's not that I don't want to like help you, 
there's just a line, you know, of people that, that, and we all have that line of people that we can help. And I'm talking about like a physical, like people standing in line to get, it sounds arrogant, doesn't it? <laughs> the way I worded that. But the point is, is like if the line could be two people, if there's two people in line, you know, you got to give me a reason to bump you to the front of the line. Yes, sir. And that's what you did. Your video was like, we can't, we got to have this guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Am I, what I'm saying making sense to y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Was it the last, the one I was sitting down with my laptop? Was that the video you're talking about? Yeah. I yeah, feel like that was a different approach that I took with that one. Like, I watched. That was the first one I saw. Okay. That that was the one I think I watched the podcast with. Is it Corey? Mm-hmm. Anderson? Yeah. Total yeah. Feeds? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was watching that and I think you guys were having a conversation about that. It's like, what can you bring to me? And I was like, I mean, it makes a lot more sense. I mean, it's cool to send a bunch of videos of you being funny and doing whatever. But in the end of the day, you run a business. <laughs> And I kind of looked at it more as like I'm applying for a job rather than I'm trying to be a funny person. Yeah. And I think when I did that, that's when like that. you guys were more interested because well, I was willing to do all these things to get the job. I then watched your video where you were funny, and that added to it. Mm-hmm. They both together made the case. But the one that where you're sitting down and you were like, it's only because of the amount of time I have. Yes, sir. Oh, I, under, I completely because understand. Because I'm going through a lot yes, of videos. Yes, sir. So like you had about a minute, you know, because – because that's how that that's how long the videos on Instagram will allow you to send them. Unless that's you cut why, them up, cut them up. Had to do that the first one. That's why there's a time them. limit of how much I get to watch. Yes. Sir. So I watched your one minute video, and it was like, oh man, this guy really wants to bring value here. He gets it, you know. And so then I watched the second one, and it was funny, and it was actually funny. And I was like, okay, this guy's got to this guy's got to come here. That's what I said after I watched it. I sent it to Donnie. Then we all watched it in the office. Then we Zoom called you where like all nine of us were on the deal. You were nervous then, weren't you? I was. <laughs> and then you guys started talking about me and I was like, was I supposed to mute it or was I supposed could to go around the us? corner? I could hear you guys. Like, uh, I, could awesome. vague, I could vaguely hear you guys and I was like, I'm not going to try and eavesdrop. So like, I started walk, trying to walk around like the corner of the barn. <laughs> what an honorable guy. Right? Well, well, what yeah. we said was good. Yeah. I just heard someone say, yeah, I like him or something like that. And I was yeah. like, I don't think I'm supposed to be hearing this. So I'm going to go, like, <laughs> I'm going to try <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> yeah, you were like moving a lot. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. This. Yeah. And at, at first, I was like, why does he keep freaking moving? And then I was like, oh, he's just nervous. No, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> all I'm saying is, like, there's a lot of people, like, even friends of mine that need jobs, you know? And so it's like, what what's the... And that's every... You got to make your... You got to sell yourself. Yes, sir. You know, everybody <clears throat> who's gotten somewhere in life is in some shape, form, or fashion good at sales. Because they had to sell themselves. Yes, sir. You know, and you have to, you have to show the other side that you're, you're gonna at least attempt to bring them more value than they do you. Now, once you get here, we're gonna make it a competition. Yes, sir. By the way, you're gonna be getting paid soon. That's fine. So, um, I wasn't worried. Five months. Don't don't celebrate too much. I haven't told him how much he's getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I haven't told him a date, so soon is relative. But, That's all right. Um, the point is, is like when you start coming in here and you start trying to bring me, like I'm gonna notice it. Yes, Lisa sir. notices it. You know, not only you get to keep your job, but like it's gonna be you're gonna be rewarded for it. So, and that's any place, but like some people move here to work here, and their family's like, "What? You're going where to that work was, for this guy?" I for didn't tell free? any of my friends. Yeah, like half of them are like asking, like, "Hey, man, what are you doing? You want to come up this week?" And I was like, "I'm I'm living in Texas. <laughs> That's I'm, awesome. I'm not I'm not in Maryland or PA anymore." I freaking respect the heck out of that because I I did the same thing. I didn't tell anyone. No, I told I told a couple of my friends. Like yeah. I told my mom, my dad, and like three or four of my closest friends. But yeah. aside from that, I just packed my bags <laughs> Sunday night and caught a bird, Texas on Monday. I yeah, caught a bird. Yeah, uh, you didn't tell your people that you worked for free. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I didn't yeah. want to have that argument. Yeah, I was selective yeah. with who I told I was working for free. I so. didn't – see, I didn't even really know because I didn't ask. I knew if I didn't ask, I couldn't be – I didn't ask if I would be getting paid, and I didn't ask how long I was going to stay because I knew if I didn't ask the question, there was no answer, and I knew <laughs> – that it worked out. Yeah. It worked out. And I knew – But you, you had an idea that it was going to be working for free for a time because it was called we did, an in- I, internship. Yeah, I guess, but I had an internship where I got paid – I. I just didn't. I had no idea. Right, right. I just had no expectations. That way, I couldn't be disappointed when I got here. Yeah, 
And you don't want the first question to be like, hey, am I going to pay for yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's why yeah. I didn't say anything. Right. Yeah. No, it's, you get, I'm going to take care of you. Oh, I you know. And but at the end of the day, like, it is what it is. Like, you're not a CEO or a, a VP at a Fortune 500 company. I am so, like, very content with what I have right now. Not, you, you, you're probably not, not going to be able to retire early working here, you know, but you're also not going to go backwards. And yes, sir. Anyway, that's the main thing. Oh, dang. Did you forget to hit record? No, my recorder. <laughs> So. that's the main thing i think when you're working in something like this like if you're if, it's, if you're doing something where you're passionate getting you're passionate about it you know and you're excited you enjoy it do you you know don't go backwards yeah if you can break even it's a free vacation but also also are you learning a trade that you can see like donnie's got a trade now he could go make a living you yes, know sir. learning two trades two trades he could make two livings yeah, what else are you doing? Bronc riding. Oh, that was the one I was talking about. Oh, filming. Editing. Yeah, yeah filming. filming. Yeah. That's a trade. I know. I'm just messing with you. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, they. Uh, <clears throat> that's the deal, man. That's the deal. So. I, I feel like if you're happy, like, I'm not the kind of person that needs some crazy salary or, like, I feel like, I mean, I get free clothes. Got a house? I mean, like, it's not like you really, what else do you really need? He's getting those for free? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, I don't need some crazy salary to be happy. Like, if I'm happy, that's all that really matters to me right now. You keep that mentality, bud, the rest of your life. Well, you, you, you do not work for free for that long here you know okay. now the more people we start adding <laughs> to the team and like we get two or three more interns and like we don't have any more work for anybody to do <laughs> you know because then it's going to be like all right this next person if you want to come you can come hang out with us but we've got more than enough you know if we get to a situation like that but like the situation you're in where you're yes, working sir. and we need that work done yes sir. then you need to be rewarded for it you know what i'm saying yes sir. that's where so like but but essentially that person whoever I had that conversation with that's going to be something they know you know I'm not going to like manipulate them to get yeah. here and then like promise them all this stuff and then <laughs> lie to them you know anyways so that's the internship program that's, you're the new guy we do end up talking about it a lot you know we talk about it a lot on podcasts because well here lately we've got a lot of them you know we've had a lot of people come through we that's one of the things I didn't think I was going to get this you know we get a lot of interns. There was a lot of intern. Like every time, time you post something or something like that, there's always someone commenting it. Multiple people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you you should see how the video. It, every day people are applying. Yes. Every sir. single day, like just because they see the videos, you know, they yes, don't sir. just when I put it on Instagram. Hey, we're looking for an intern. We obviously get a lot then, but the more specific we get with the needs that we have. Yes, sir. The less we'll get. You know, it's okay. Like this person needs. We we're looking for someone to edit. You know, there's going to be less. Yes, sir. But if I put something out where it's like, I need somebody to exercise my Bronx and, yeah. and look after cows. <laughs> there'll be just hundreds. Yeah, there'll be thousands maybe. Yeah. I just think that's And what, I don't blame any one of them. Oh, yeah. It's a fun job. It's yes, a sir. fun life. That's fun. So oh. you just got to be sneaky about how you get in there. You got to be willing to do the work that you need. And then if you're willing to do that, then the stuff like going out and herding cows and stuff like that that's going to happen yeah you just have to understand you got to do other stuff yeah <clears throat> and that's any ranch even that's though. any job yeah that almost job. that's his life what's the suckiest job you've had caitlin the suckiest job uh i think for like a month or two when i first got to a and i was filing like i'd go in whenever and file like, reynolds and reynolds no, this they were lawyers, and I'd go in and just like stuff they would pull up. Didn't you work like four, there though? R- Reynolds and Reynolds, yeah, but I loved the people I worked with. Oh yeah. So it was not. It was like the office, whereas like the work that you did was just kind of like monotonous, like and it didn't matter really, you know. But like the crew, it was yeah. super awesome. Bunch of really good people there. But yeah, it was just I worked there for like two months, and I was like, yeah, I'm done here. I'm gonna go get like a real job yeah. in college. That was the first one. But I haven't had, like, a bad job or a bad experience, like, really. Like, I've always been blessed with, like, really, really good people that I work with and I work for. And, like, I've never had, like, 
I did not like being a loan officer. I'll say that much right out of college. Oh, yeah. You worked at that bank. Yeah, for like eight months. And I did not like that at all. I just didn't like being a loan officer. I was... Me who me and somebody came to visit you. Carter. Carter. Yeah, we yeah. went in to visit her at the bank. <laughs> and uh Can I get alone. Dude, he won this thing. No. Like, <laughs> I don't remember what it was for. It's like this video application or whatever and What if, was the bank called? At the time because Prosperity took over First Victoria Bank. First Victoria Bank. Yeah. So it's first. But Victoria Carter bank. really did have an account there. I had never been there. He had never been. But they were like having food and all this. And yeah. Caitlin was there and I was like, well, let's go over here. They're having an open house or something like that. Because yeah. it was at night. Yeah. And was, they had this station <laughs> set up where you could like talk about your experience. And I was just <laughs> bullshit. And I went over there, I was just like you know what I love most about First Victoria are the relationships. <laughs> I can come in here and I'm going to be greeted by Tanya. And you know what she's going to say? Hey, Dale, how's your afternoon going? Like something like that yeah. for like 60 seconds. And they like ended up using it for their social media and their website. <laughs> yeah. And they have an account there. And, have an account there. <laughs> and he like won something like at this big thing. And I was like, they told me, hey, your friend Dale won. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> it's like, of course he did. <laughs> like, awesome. <sighs> I'll just, I think I gave it to like Carter or something or like whatever because he actually had an account. But anyway. God, that was funny. Those were the days. Yeah, when you didn't have anything else better to do, just to come into a bank for free food and then leave. I didn't have anything yeah. better to do. <laughs> Golly, those were, I had an intern back then too. A couple of them. Man, we did a lot of, that's. Oh, Pony you Boy. Just, you just better be glad yeah, that Pony Boy. we weren't. We don't live outside of a college town right now. Oh, man. Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, why, why? I say that. That sounds like, terrible. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> Might need to go to Stephenville tonight. We can get there. Mm. Mm. Rock and pee. Barcy. Barcy. I'm good. Anyway. I've never been out in Stephenville. You've never what? Never been out in Stephenville. Yeah. It's nothing like College Station, but no. then again, what is? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Lubbock, Texas is somewhat similar, just very different. A lot of really good looking ladies in Lubbock, Texas. I was going to say, they all look blonde and they all look beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yes. You're going there in June? Anytime. Like cotton farmer's daughters. They Anytime. Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Texas Tech. Yeah, let's, let's go, Lubbock. Yeah. Forget Are there Bill. any good-looking guys in Lubbock or no? Who cares? I don't. I haven't. I don't spend uh, much time with my daughter. Guys. <laughs> We're gonna go there June fourth and fifth. Oh, you yeah. need to. You need to pack a bag and go with us because that's. I'll where, be there. Yeah. Go roping too. Cook's garage. I'm telling you. I've never that been will, to Cook's garage and I've always wanted to go. Look out for the rodeo time. Hey, put it on your radar as if it wasn't already. When we go to that deal, like. Get as many of the attractive women in it. We're just going to have like an, uh, just a montage, two minute montage of good looking girls. Of good looking girls. Slow mo. <laughs> Slow mo. <laughs> Slow mo. <laughs> 66 frames a second. Yeah. I'm getting my mullet touched up before then. My oh, already. Good. My old man was like, we were, he was, he, he, uh, was mass red rider at tech. He got his degree there and he was on his way. He was getting, he got his master's. And he was on his way to getting his PhD at A and M, so he had, you know, lived a life at both um, worlds, and he would just shake his head. College Station, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of higher IQs down here, but that's it. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, no, I'm no, not talking well, about any one particular. No offense. I'm, I'm not talking about any <laughs> one particular young lady. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, on average. I need to speculate. I've never been a tech. Just no offense. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble on this podcast. No, he's like, just no offense. Yeah. No offense. What did I tell Neely this morning? It looks like you tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even talked to me. You haven't criticized me or given a compliment at all. What did I say? Like, well, your hair something looks about like our hair. Yeah. I like your hair today. It looks better. <laughs> looks, looks like, like you, you tried. tried. <laughs> <laughs> She's so terrible. <laughs> Almost as bad as Joe. Anyway, 
Well, you uh, skipped out on Penn State, but you're at the uh, Rodeo Time University. I'm now. still in school. I'm telling my grandpa that I'm still in school. Your grandpa thinks you're still in school. No, he knows I'm not, but he's expecting me to go back. It's, you transferred. To, tell him you transferred to Rodeo Winnebago Time University. University. W. Yeah. W. U. Like well, yeah. something like UW. I don't know. Winnebago I'll talk to the dean, Winnebago. Dale Brisby. Yeah, there's a. Well, you Winnebago. We'll State. work out. That'll be lesson like number one. Winnebago State. Winnebago, Winnebago State. State. Yeah, that's good. Ah, uh, cool. Well. WSU. Do you have any? <laughs> do you have any life advice for the viewers, listeners? I say this all the time: you win some, you lose some. It's <laughs> a good one. You, some bad happens, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Did you come up with that? No, I think Dale Earnhardt actually came up with that. But I'm, I love NASCAR. Raise hail, praise Dale. Yeah, Earnhardt. today's his birthday too. We should put that on a T-shirt for you. I'd wear it all the time with my mullet. I want to get him a t-shirt that says Winnebago State University. I think that'd be a good t-shirt idea. But you win some, you lose some. Put it on my list. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I say this all the time. (laughs) I do. You can ask all of my friends. They all started saying it, too. The farmer I worked for, (laughs) he says it now. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the day those those chickens died, he came out of the barns like, you win some, you lose some, Alex. (laughs) I was like, amen. What an influential young man we have here. You win some and you lose yeah. some. <laughs> Slow <clap>. uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know that we should give our life advice. No, just because how are we going to top that? How are we going to top that? I just felt. We should have gone with you last. I'm sorry. I apologize. Don't apologize. It was great advice. Katrin, what you got? I'll kind of piggyback off that. My dad and I always say, uh, if that's the worst thing that's happened, we're in good shape. Mm-hmm. That's something mm-hmm. we I like say. that. I've yeah. said mm-hmm. that before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you say today though? You know, um, <laughs> um, good judgment um, comes from uh, experience, and um, experience comes from bad judgment. Mm. 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 <clears throat> mm. Uh, go where you are appreciated, not just tolerated. Yep. yep. Mm. 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 Ah. Mm. Sometimes you become appreciated. In places that you were tolerated after you've been gone for a while, that's what I've learned. Yeah, yeah. Just, I've just makes the heart go fonder. Kind of. When thing. I heard that, like it, it helped me. Like really, I had some friends. I have friends on my friend list where I was just like, oh my gosh, this person just tolerates me. I'm the greatest of all time. <laughs> they should appreciate me. Yeah. Then I have other friends that they're like they appreciate me. Anyways, roll tide, no Bama. On to the next one. Thank you for listening. The Old Sun. Po- oh, yeah, we switch it back. Rodeo Time Podcast. I'm your man, Dale Brisby. That's my grandmother calling. I need to go see her. In Lubbock? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, let's go. GG. Yep. Um, I spent a lot of time there in high school. Is she one of the good looking girls? <laughs> <laughs> she was. Dude, she, there's a picture of Gigi that's like yeah, she used bad to, be, to the bone. Yeah, she like, used to be good looking. Bad B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bad G. Bad G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we would go there in high school. It was two and a half hours. I grew up in Memphis. We yep. would drive. Tennessee. My old man would let me. I'm uh, pretty sure that's the part. <laughs> let me drive a lot in high school. Especially, I'd be like, ah, I'm just staying at Gigi's house. But Gigi didn't care what time I came in. I'd co- I would stroll in that some bucket at one o'clock. Anyways, whatever. On, what, what, what we're saying? On to the next yeah, one. It's the end of the enough. podcast. Thank you for watching, <laughs> listening. Um, give us a give us a shout and let us know what you like and what you don't like. And uh, well, don't tell us what you don't like. Just stop listening if you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> this is the end of a very long podcast. If you've been listening to this whole thing, then you, you probably some, like you love it. Us. You win some, you lose some. You We're win probably some, talking you lose to some. the ones that like it. So <laughs> thank you for listening. Tell us what you do like and what you want to hear next. Pow pow, and on to the next one.